Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Habita fillah Continue on in our reading of the treaties by Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili Hafizullah Ta'ala on Nasiha or uh, advice for Ahl Sunnah We reach the third uh, point and the Sheikh said One of the most important objectives that Islam encourages every Muslim to emphasize and to be diligent about fulfilling is the guidance of mankind to the religion of Islam. When the Prophet wasallam sent Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu to Khaybar, he instructed him, لِيَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجْلًا وَاحِدٍ خَيْرًا لَكَ مِنْ عُمْرَ النَّعْمِ if Allah was to guide one person by your hands, it would be better for you than the red camels. And so, Ahabatifillah, it shows us that our primary objective should be calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, especially when we deal with issues between Ahlul Sunnah or mistakes of Ahlul Sunnah, it should be to call your brother or sister back to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that requires patience. And that requires perseverance uh, and consistency. And not just quickly, oh, we established the, uh, the hujjah, we established the proof upon him, khalas, he didn't accept it, we gave him 20 minutes, and it's finished. No, but rather sometimes these things take, uh, they take time. It may take a while for a person to humble themselves or to even understand or to no longer misinterpret the proofs or the evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah. Or it may be an issue of ijtihad where the scholars ha uh, differ over because one reasoned from the book in the Sunnah and came up with one conclusion as far as a fatwa and another one came up with another conclusion, both using the same usul but maybe one has more understanding than the other and all the other reasons that uh, the scholars differ. <clears throat> and so it's very important that there is a consistent effort to guide someone. And what's very interesting is that you find some of the youth and some of the tulab al-ilm that claim and, and that follow some some of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah that are well known, like Sheikh Rabi, who is known for the controversy surrounding the Sheikh, um, for his vigilance in refuting Ahl Bid'ah and exposing people who attributed themselves to the Sunnah or who uh, made many errors until they either left the Minhaj or whatever the case may be. And we're not saying that the sheikh is right in all of his rulings. This is not what we're saying. So we're not blind following the sheikh and saying this. Everything and every situation requires observation and knowledge and to look at it <clears throat> for those who are able to do so. And so what's important here, though, is that there are many students who claim to love the sheikh and be vigilant, but when he even explains himself how he dealt with some of the biggest hizbis. You know, for example, uh, Abdurrahman Abdul Khalik in, um, Sheikh Abdurrahman Abdul Khalik in uh, Kuwait, that Sheikh Rabi said that he spent, I think he, it was something like 10 to 12 years, you know, and wanting to, to work to, to, to get him, because that was a former colleague of his in the Islamic University, and working to try to get him to come away from the errors that the sheikh found. But however, uh, that did not uh, prove to be fruitful. And so then he felt it necessary to warn against him. The point being is that he took time. He didn't just say, you know, I read a couple of statements and, you know, you're finished. We're just going to attack you. We're going, you know, it's go it's done. You're, 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 uh, you know, I'm going to make tibdi of you or whatever the case may be. But rather it was a thing of time of hope that the person would return back. 
But we don't see this from a lot of the youth and we don't even see this from a lot of the students. And I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about just English speakers. I'm talking about, I know so many Arabs from, uh, from Algeria, from Morocco, from uh, Saudi, from all over the world, Yemenis, everywhere. I, I know many that have the same problem with this quickness to make tibdi of someone. Quickness, any mistake or anything they perceive as a mistake, which is a problem, and then they make tibdiya. You know, there's no husn al there's no, there's no da'wah. And this is the point of mentioning this, <clears throat> that the sheikh mentioned, and this is a nas. This is a text, textual proof. What more do you want? Do you need a statement of a scholar? Really, after that, if you have a clear, clear text, even though the mashayikh, the salaf al-salih, ridwan allahi alayhim, <clears throat> up until now, and the followers of the salaf exhibit that principle. <clears throat> so then the Shaykh, he mentioned, so it is imperative for the one whom Allah has favored by guiding him to the sunnah to be diligent and exert every effort possible in calling those who have either deviated from the sunnah or have some level of negligence regarding it back to its implementation. This should be done with gentleness and leniency in order to bring their hearts closer to accepting the haqq just as Allah said to Musa and Harun, ila innahu tagha, lahu layna. O yakhsha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa, He said, Go both of you to Musa and Harun. Go both of you to Fir'aun. This is to Fir'aun. The biggest shaitan amongst uh, mankind of committing shirk and kufr. Go both of you to Fir'aun. Verily he has transgressed all bounds in disbelief and disobedience. And speak to him mildly. Perhaps he may accept the admonition or develop some fear of Allah. So look at this. In this ayah, this is a, again, what is this? This is a nas. This is a text. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding one of the prophets, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and Harun, Harun, to go to the Fir'aun and speak to him gently, with gentleness, you know, calling him. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after speaking to him mildly, perhaps he may accept the admonition or develop some fear of Allah. So perhaps he will gain some taqwa, or perhaps he will heed this warning, this admonition, this da'wah. And why? Because you went gentle. And so it shows us that that is the asl of da'wah. And what is very gharib, very strange, is how many students, when they hear this, and they hear this hujjah, they hear this proof, <clears throat> and others from du'at, that they will say, you're mumayya. You're being, you're throwing away the principles of Ahlul Sunnah. It's not the principles of Ahlul Sunnah coming from the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not the principles of Ahlul Sunnah coming from the Minhaj al Anbiya, the, the way of the, the Prophets. Isn't this a statement of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? What more do you need after that? How is that Mumayya? So it is a dangerous, dangerous thing. And I've had a, a personal experience with a a person who I used to respect as a student of knowledge. Well, come to find out, but I won't speak further about that. But anyhow, I used to respect him for his having sat with one of the great scholars of this time. And then we had this discussion, and he cut me off for this very reason. And it actually was about Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali. And he cut me off, and we haven't spoken in probably two years now. And it was no loss to me. And But what is a travesty to see someone that you had respect for, to see them blind following people who are sometimes even less stature than, than he is. And people have made so many mistakes, but yet you want to take a position, place that you want, and you want me to come into line. 
and then you reject something that the major scholars say, and then you talk about you're following the sunnah. This is the dangerous thing, Habitifillah. Our hawa, our desires can deceive us in so many ways. And I do believe, honestly, that was the clearest example for me to see before my eyes, you know, him to debate me based on battle. He debated me on battle and he said what I said had no proof. I said, SubhanAllah, I gave him the ayat, we did this. And he, 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 jadil ala battle. It amazes me. It's amazing to see that yourself, to witness that. You know, that, that, that's what is really the amazing thing, to actually witness that and be in an experience with that, uh, like that, especially from someone who supposedly adheres to the, or claims to, and, you know, you take from the same scholars mostly, and so on and so forth, and we came from the same, uh, some of the same study circles and so forth. But it's amazing what a person, you don't know what a person gains, what they benefit and what goes into their heart and how their desires can overtake them. And that's why we hope and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. But the shahid here, Habitifillah, is going with the nasus, going with the text. And the text illustrate for us that the asal is, that the origin in dawah is that you, you, you have that gentleness. That doesn't mean it's always going to be that situation. No. You know, for everything, they have their place. And we talked about that in the last lesson. But the important thing is, is that gentleness and leniency and dawah goes a lot further than being stern. And that's in most situations. If I want to call anyone to Islam, or if I want to call someone to the Sunnah who's, who's a Muslim, or one of my brothers who's made a mistake who's from Ahl Sunnah, whatever a person's status is, most of the people accept more from you if you treat them with respect and you're gentle than they do to you cursing them and attacking them and making takfir of them and, and, and uh, asking for the curses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. They don't accept that. No one accepts that. Who would accept that? Would you have accepted Islam for those who embraced Islam? If someone had said, you're, you're just a, a kafir, you're going to the hellfire and you are this and this and this, please accept Islam. It just defies the sunnah to law. You know, it defies what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made as the sunnah in creation our natures, and all of those other things, and it defies the nas, the nasus. <clears throat> and then the sheikh mentions, he said, the meaning of speak to him mildly in this ayat is call him by the title he loves to be addressed by, that which is consistent with his rank and social status. The Prophet ﷺ wrote a letter, a letter to Hercules, the king of the Roman Empire, in which he said, this letter is to Hercules, the exalted king of Rome. Now, if you were to do something like that now, doing what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, do you know how quick the Tekfiris and other people from Ahl Bid'ah would attack you? And sometimes even some of your own brothers whose knowledge is limited or not looking at all of the Sunnah, or maybe these things are not uh, clear for them, they'll quickly say either you're Mumayya or they'll make takfir of you, or they'll make tabdi of you, or they'll, okay? But instead, realizing the social rank and status when you address someone, even if it, maybe this person is your enemy, but you're trying to call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you do it in a way that maintains their status. You don't try to belittle them and then think they're going to accept from you. So that's a very important aspect of wisdom in the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which our da'wah should be based upon. Then the Shaykh said, <clears throat> similarly, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to address the chief of the hypocrites, Abdullah ibn Ubay, <clears throat> as salul by his kunya, by his, 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 his <clears throat> kunya, which was uh, Abu Hubab. This also includes being patient in the rudeness and dis disinclination on the part of those whom you are calling and to combat their impudence with good manners not to be hasty regarding their acceptance of your dawah as Allah says therefore be patient as did the messengers of strong will <clears throat> and do not be in haste about them accepting the truth look at this Allah has command, commanded the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with being patient and persistent and uh, not being hasty about them accepting the dawah that's the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. 
those are some of the most important benefits that we can gain from that third point. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.